Well, I, I'm glad to see this clouds have covered the sun. It's getting kind of hot up here. All right, so what I'm going to walk through, let me just finish up the uh, PowerPoint so you guys can see. Um, all right, so if you do want to stay connected with me, um, I, will, I can pass around a clipboard. All right. Um, but let me just give you these websites because I am teaching a lot of workshops this summer and maybe this is going to be something you want to get deeper into the formatting wise. I would encourage you to sign up for one of my next workshops. Um, so first of all, um, my Facebook page is a great place to go. Uh, I've got endorsed, I mean that's really where I spend a lot of my energy. But this website right here, plancast.com forward slash 50 interviews, is uh, where I put all of my upcoming workshops. So you can see where I'm going to be teaching this summer. Um, I'm teaching three classes for the Colorado Free University this year. And specifically on what I'm about to touch on, you know, what I'm about to go on now. And it's a full three hours on just that. I'm not going to cover the stuff I covered the first part of this. And then on July 1st, I'm launching my own membership site uh, called Pixels to Profit. Dot com and um, I'll be offering up a short trial for that but here's the problem I found is that you can hire me to help you with all this marketing stuff but I'm you know 85 bucks an hour I just can't justify doing it less than that I can't stay in business if I charge less than that and it's hard for you to make back that $85 right away so guess what I want to take and if I'm going to teach you how to do it I might as well teach others how to do it right and um, so I'm going to I'm putting all that information on pixels to profit .com. It'll be a you know, monthly sh small membership fee of 10 or $15 a month. And it would, timing might be really good for you guys. Once you get your books published, I know you're inevitably going to have all these questions about, OK, what do I do now? What do I do now? And um, I will tell you that in this business that I'm in, the most successful people are doing this. They're taking their knowledge and they're sharing it in a way that others can access cost effectively anywhere. And this is, if you guys are experts in anything, ultimately you're probably going to come back to something like this. You're going to become savvy to teach people how to do something, and you're going to have your own membership site because I will tell you, it's great. Not only because you can help more people, but that's income that you can depend on. And I will say as an entrepreneur, I still miss that monthly paycheck. I wish I had that. As an employee, I had this paycheck I could count on. And if, as you build any business as an entrepreneur, you better find something to eventually replace that monthly paycheck that is not dependent upon you personally serving your market. Because when you're not serving your market, you're not getting paid. When you die or you get sick, you're not getting paid. So. Yes, so um, the main IP of that template is this website, which has over 50 tutorials stepping you through each step of the formatting that I do here. Now, let's see if we can enlarge this. So when you log in, you basically get access to all of these videos. These are all video tutorials, five to 10 minutes each. And I'm going to actually step through all this stuff right now very quickly. Creating, your, creating the file, and it's all part of the EPUB template. So I have to charge something for that because you're getting access to all these tutorials, which there were, actually had somebody help me create all these. So there was an investment there. But advanced formatting, I mean, and if it's not there, the reason why we have 50 now is because somebody asked me a question. And instead of me answering the question, I tried to create a tutorial, and I put it up there. But it's, it's all searchable right here. Um, but you can see there's fifth, now 56 articles and you know I even have a set of Mac tutorials because a lot of people are now using Macs and Word on the Mac is slightly different. Here's the only prerequisites of the software. The table of contents is the main important feature that breaks on some versions of Word. Mainly on the Mac, if you have anything older than Word 2011, it doesn't work the way it's supposed to. On the PC, it works for every version of Word back to like 2003, maybe if you're still using Word 2000, it's probably time to upgrade anyway. But um, if you have a Mac, you've got to be using Word 2011, which is the new the version that came out about a year ago. As an alternative, if you're a fan of uh, OpenOffice or LibreOffice, which by the way is the new version of OpenOffice, if you guys are fans of that software, the temp there is a template for that. It's slightly different, but it's on the CD. And it's a whole different set of tutorials. It's a diff different um, 
it's just a different way of doing it. And quite honestly, I love working in open office, but the majority of the world has been brainwashed into using Microsoft since college. You know why Microsoft gave all this software away to universities? It's so that when we were adults, we'd be locked into using that software. Smart strategy. Um, but anyway, that's to answer your question, it is available online. Um, and in fact, here's the reason why you need somebody who's in the thick of this every day. Amazon just this month made a major change in the back end of their conversion software for the Kindle. I was devastating when I realized that now my files were not looking the way they're supposed to. So I made the mistake, and here's a lesson learned to share with all of you, is I spent probably eight to 10 hours trying to find a workaround, right? An entity like Amazon changed something, so I had to change and figure out what I could do. Turns out, I contacted somebody at Amazon. Within an hour, she had a fix for me. And I told her I'd been mucking around with this for 10 hours, easily. And she said, well, anytime you have a question next time, ask me. I'd be happy to help you. But I mean, I just, I couldn't believe it. So there's a new version of the template, which um, is on these CDs, but I had about 20 CDs I have to toss now because the old version template doesn't work. Um, back to print on demand. Even in software, don't print more than you need because this is a good example. Thankfully, all these DVDs or CDs that I had burned for me or created for me are blank. So I just load the software on before I go talk exactly for this reason. But I'm telling you guys, having a partner, somebody who understands, I mean, this is why you pay me to help you do this. Um, anyway. template is your product? Yep, it's the, it's the Word template, which is set up, which is, was used to create the books that I create now. Um, it's a slightly different version. It's a slightly different way of doing the work that I'm, I do for a living, um, but it's, it's the do-it-yourself option. So what I'm going to show you guys is the do-it-yourself option. It's a great, if you were to use the template to create your ebook, when you do come to me or somebody like me, your cost to convert it is going to be minimal because you've now, I've ta taught you how the people who do this work need to get the files. So I'm going to walk through that real quick. Are you guys ready? Okay. So when you get the, um, whether you buy the template or not, this is if you have the template, it's going to create a DOT file. So I just double click on that. And the reason I'm using this is just because this document is already set up um, to, to use it. So it just talks about here's the tutorials. Now over here I talked about the document map, which is so valuable. So the great thing about the document map is it takes you straight to each section of the book that you're working on. Now in order for the document map to work, two things. You've got to have the document map enabled. So on the Mac version, it's on one of the sidebar features. So look around, whatever version of Word you're using, turn on the document map. By default, it's turned off. Next is you need to understand how styles work. Now, when I work in um, Microsoft Word, the two windows I have open are my document map and my styles win window. Now, have you guys seen the styles window before, all these styles? Have you ever paid attention to them? Okay, you need to start. The kiss of death in ebook and building an ebook is using normal. 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 Normal style. Don't ever use normal style. Amazon doesn't know what to do with it. In fact, I just got that reconfirmed with the lady I've been working with up there. She said, you can never use normal as your style. You always need to use a custom style that dictates what Amazon's going to do with that file. Now, the process involved is Amazon takes your Word doc and they do a conversion to HTML which they call their Mobi file. Now, how do they know what that HTML file is supposed to look like? It's all defined in your styles. So if you look at, for example, I created a style here called e indent. Now you can create your own style and call it e indent. So what I want to show you though is I'm going to modify the style. I just want it, two ways to look at it. You can either go to the styles menu and click modify style or you can just right click here and go to paragraph. Now there's paragraph styles and character styles. I need you guys to understand the difference. Character styles are things like bold, italics, and, and underline. You can create character styles within any paragraph style as much as you want. There's nothing wrong with doing that. As I mentioned, the only pitfall is in iBook or um, iBooks, no, um, pages. Pages doesn't, while it allows you to do it in pages, when you save it as a dot doc, it strips all those out. You can imagine the nightmare up to the author when they realize all those bolds and italics they did are now gone. The other style that's important to understand are paragraph styles. 
Now I select paragraph styles and there's things called indent and, indent and spacing and then line and page breaks. This really is the main one you're going to pay attention to. Now the indent is the indent of that entire paragraph. The first line is the first line of that paragraph. Spacing is the spacing above that paragraph, spacing below the paragraph. In fact, I want to open up this really quick because there are, this is important for you guys, this is a good summary. Um, it's kind of the 10 things you need to know, or you need to keep in mind as you're working in Word with your own book. Um, here it is, best practices. All right. Number one, limit the number of different styles you use in your file. So you're going to create some custom styles, you use the styles in the template. I would say no more than five. See, if, if somebody has to work on your file, the price of, the, of what it takes to do the work is going to be based on the number of different styles, which essentially are the number of custom features you have in your book. The most basic book is a novel that has one style. Paragraph indent, right? A complex nonfiction book might have 10 or 20 styles, but try not to go more than that. You're just, it, it, a custom style would be, for example, a bulleted list. Just make sure the bulleted list is consistent throughout the whole book. Um, you know, uh, a quote, like a call out, would be considered another style, things like that. Don't ever use blank carriage returns. Let me show you what that looks like. If you're working along in your book and you're like, you know what, Brian, I need an extra space there. Don't ever do this. Instead, let's get rid of that. You go to either modify the paragraph where you're like, well, I don't want to mod modify all instances of that style. I just want to modify this one instance. So what you want to do is under, this is, I'm not as familiar with Word. Okay, that's margins. Uh, there should be, yeah, there should be more information right here. Um, you can change line spacing here. I wouldn't do it. Um, I may wind up firing up uh, Parallels so I can run Windows version. Are most of you guys Windows or Mac? So raise your hand if you're a Mac and Windows. Okay, still about three to one, but it's hard for me to neglect the Mac users. Um, so we're going to go ahead and, in the interest of time, I am going to fire up the software I'm familiar with. Uh, you know, no matter how hard I've tried to convert myself to being a Mac user, I'm just, 20 years of being on a PC, um, I'm just so much faster. And I'm trying, but there's no Mac store in Fort Collins. You know, Boulder is the closest Mac store. Everybody's like, well, just go to a Mac store and get taught. And it's, uh, it's not so easy when you uh, do it. But the cool thing is today there's software for the Mac that allows you to run Windows 7 on the Mac. So you guys will get to see that. So you don't need to go out and buy a different computer. Because uh, a beautiful thing about MacBooks is they are fast. These are very powerful um, machines. I'm going to show you what I was trying to get through. Is let's go back to the list. Um, don't ever use a tab to indent a paragraph, please. And don't use spaces. You have to use the style, which right here, see this is in E indent. If I choose E no indent, it takes away that indent. This is the one I'm working on right here. And how has that been defined? in the style. So under paragraph, this has been, there's no indent here, right? If there was an indent, I would do the first line by whatever you want. So maybe I want this to be 0.35 and that's indented. Now, you're going to use this character here that you guys maybe have never used before. It's called um, non-printing characters. It's this thing that looks like a paragraph symbol. Because you need to see these hidden features of the formatting. Like for example, how would you know there was a space here that wasn't supposed to be there? The only way you can see it is if you have paragraph formatting on. So you're going to start working as your format book. Now if this annoys you, just turn it off. But as you go back through your book and format it for an ebook reader, you need to have that on so you can see these hidden things. So all the stuff that you're showing us now, I mean, if we could written a novel, something like that 400 page novel that we've written in Word, now we have to get it into ebook. Do we need to read, sorry. Redo it? Yeah, no. So ideally, hopefully, I'd have to see the word file, but it's got probably one paragraph style throughout the whole book. 
all you need to do is go in and modify that one style and it'll universally change the whole book. So you're just going to make a few tweaks. So you pull it into this, pull that document into this, and then you do these things Yeah, or you can work with the document directly in Word if you know how to do some of this stuff and test it. The best way to test it is you upload it to Amazon, let them do a conversion. Now, I guess this isn't obvious, but you know, you can upload a book to Amazon's back end and not publish it just to see the conversion. So you're going to do some trial and error. Or you could pay me 85 bucks and I would format it for you. Because if it's already in Word, it's not going to cost you a lot. I, I would charge you just an hour. Um, but this really, I'm walking you guys through as if you're still writing your book. This is a good way to construct the content. Even if you have more than one style, there, isn't there a way you can go in and change, change it? Everything? You can do a find and replace. Yeah, if I wanted to change all this, for example, to one style, you just select it and then choose the style. Yeah, you can do that too. And, and a lot of people will take their books and drop them into the template, which has all these styles into it, and then they clean up their book this way. Sorry, back there. I don't know what those are. Sorry. Probably. It, it's all the formatting that you can't see. For example, um, let me show you what a book. I'll get a book like this, and the author will have five spaces before every paragraph. How do I know that that paragraph is supposed to be indented? I can see those periods. And, and to be honest with you, I have to see that it was done wrong before I can fix it. And if I don't have that turned on, I can't see whether or not this was a paragraph indent or somebody hit five spaces. So on the toolbar, this is a thing that looks like a paragraph mark. And it's the same on Word, and on PC, and the Mac. In fact, let's jump over to the PC. Still loading. Yes. So, okay, so if when you were suggesting that, so if I dump my content into the template now, but I'm before editing stage, the question is, how do I, how do I send this to my editor then? Um, well, so this would be in a perfect world, any editor that would work with you would understand the inside, would understand how to use this template. In fact, the best editors, when I tell, teach somebody how to use this, or they buy the template, I said, you are an editor I would send work to, because you understand how styles work. You can still do correct changes and things like that in here, but these are some basic elements that Microsoft never taught us, and Amazon hasn't taught us very well, that if you follow these basic guidelines, you're going to be fine. Um, but I would send the file in this finished format to the editor and say, listen, there's styles in here. I don't want you inventing new styles. Do you understand how Word works? And they say, well, I have no idea how Word works. It says, well, I'm going to go find somebody that does. Or, you know, force them to step up there. There's nothing actually in the template. I mean, what you're explaining to us now, I already understand and use that. The question is, but your template is still giving me more than that, just this tutorial on this part from going from normal into yeah. paragraphs. The, the thing about the template is you have this really nice table of contents. So when I change something here, um, let me jump to how the table of contents works. This uh, is hyperlinked to the heading one and two styles. Now this is one thing that a lot of people struggle with when they do this themselves is how do you create a table of contents that's hyperlinked and in the navigation bar of the Kindle. This is probably the number one reason people buy this template because they've hacked through the table of contents and they can't get it to work right. So this, this template has the table of contents in it that links automatically. So when I make a change here, so instead of styles usage, I'm going to call this subchapter one. Now when you go back to the table of contents, all you have to do is right click, update field, and it pulls in that. And this is all hyperlink when you upload it. I'll show you guys in a second. Let me go over to um, see if Parallels is working yet. Still loading. I haven't been as impressed with the speed of Windows on the Mac like I thought I would. Somebody told me it ran faster on a, P on a Mac than it did on PC. Those are brainwashed Mac people who think the whole world is <laughs> better because. Oh, so I need to use, you're right, parallels. Okay. You guys learn a little bit about how to do this because I'm learning, but. Yeah, you have to run it as coherence on parallels. Yeah, run it, run it either boot camp or just boot directly into it. Oh. So you're not using 2010, you're using 2010. So on the PC, I have Word 2007. 
on the Mac, I have Word 2011. So these are the versions of Word I have. You can use the new version of Word just fine. Here's the most important thing, and it's in my rules. So let me go back through these while this is still loading up. In fact, if I gave you guys one printout, this should have been it. I'm sorry. And I can give this to you. Um, Always keep your file in DOC format, please. DOCX breaks the files. DOCX is evil because DOCX is different on the Mac than it is on the PC. All the problems that people have tend to happen because of DOCX. DOCX is different than on different versions of Word. DOC was created in Word 97 and has never changed. Amazon has built their conversion tool around the standard that hasn't changed, which is DOC. So just always keep your file in DOC. When you create DOCX, you now have created elements that don't convert back to DOC, and you're going to have to go back and fix that stuff. So that's my number one rule, and I'll show you how to do that in Word. Um, And I would turn this on by default. I'm going to show you guys how to change the setting. These are all the things, again, I'm going through it quickly. The, the value of the template is, value of, is the file, but it's showing you somebody how to use it. Because when I hired Veronica to lay my book out in InDesign, I had to hire her to show me how to use InDesign, right? So it doesn't help me if I just give you the template. What helps me is if I actually show you how to use the template. I don't know. Word's not loading. Now it is in the background. You guys are watching me click on it, right? I'm on a Mac, but I'm running Parallels, which doesn't cooperate right now. I think what's going on is it doesn't like it when you run Word on the Mac at the same time you run Word on the Parallels. So let me close that down really quick. All right. And the thing about a template file, you guys, is when you create a DOT file, every time you create a new file from that template, it opens up a new document. So document one, document two, document three. You want to be careful not to break your template file because that's the one, that's sort of your golden template. And you'll all make slight changes potentially to your um, DOT file. And let me save this. And we'll, um, yeah, we've got, and I'll spend a little more time on this and then I'll get into specifically some of your expertise, how you would go about identifying whether or not there was an opportunity for you to do this. Hmm, my Mac used to be a lot faster. Let's just keep going through the rules while that's closing down. Um, use, utilizing the document map. When you insert images, you have to be careful that the images, which I'm going to show you how to drag and drop into a Word file, images are handled just fine. It's great. But if you put in really large images, your file size is going to start getting really big, right? Well, we learned this recently when I did a cookbook that Amazon has a 50 meg limit size. The largest file you can upload to Amazon is 50 megs. Barnes & Noble, it's only 20 megs. And keep in mind, this template works for both Barnes & Noble and Amazon. You upload the same file and it does the conversion. Um, so you want to keep your file size. And most e-readers today, with the exception of Apple, because you know the, I, I, the iPad has got amazing resolution, 96 DPI is about the highest that people are going to be able to tell a difference anyway. That's essentially what you would see on a website. So don't worry about a gigantic, high pixelated image. It's, it's overkill. Do you have a question? Are you going to send this? Yeah. And then you're saying 50 meg on the whole book or just per? No, the, if one book had 50 meg limit. But honestly, if your big book's bigger than 50 megs, what is it? It maybe needs to be shut, cut down a little bit. Not 50K, 50 meg. 
I've only had, you guys, I've only had one book that ever had more than 50 megs. That's why you need to look at the resolution of the images you're using. There's tools out there that let you batch convert all of your images to like 96 DPI. And as long as it's 96 DPI, you can put hundreds of images in there. It, no, they need to be images. We were just talking about that earlier. You guys want video and audio in your ebook? Just link to it is my recommendation. Uh, you're going to drive the production cost way up when you start putting in audio and video. And I know that they're showing you guys how to do that. Th this stuff is possible, but is it is it realistically possible for you to create it? Not so easy. And while the possibility exists, the more you drive your production time and cost up, the harder it's going to be for you to make that money back. So I'm a huge proponent of keep your costs low so you can make that money back quickly. Just link to a website, link to a Dropbox that has the audio or the video in it. Link to YouTube. I have tons of YouTube links in my ebooks. Yeah, but then it distracts the reader to other things. Right. Yeah, they're making, yeah, it's a little challenging, but um, it's an opportunity for you to engage more with the client. In my opinion, if you have lots of audio and video, you should invest a little money in a website, take the reader to your website, have them sign up to get access to it, and then capture their contact info and give them all the rich content that way. The problem, too, is these, a lot of, you're, you're, you're not going to be backwards compatible to a lot of the common e-readers out there. The regular standard Kindle that is the most popular still, for anybody who reads um, e-books, they understand that e-ink is the preferred way to do it because most of us stare at a computer screen all day long. The last thing I want to do is look at a computer screen when I'm reading my book. So you, you have an, a book that has e-ink, um, which is essentially just like a printed word. This is much more pleasurable, but there's no audio and video on here. OK? All right, I got, it looks like I finally got word up in here. So what I was going to show you, and, and I'm not even going to open the template, so just say, oh, come on, I'll have this loaded next time. So let's say this is my book, exists already. Notice normal is the default. This is still loading. Oh, now this is running my... Well, the problem is when you install Windows on here, you have to do all the settings just like you would on a fresh computer. And I didn't do all that yet. I just, I want to just pause. Now it's, right. Yeah. Well, on the Kindle Fire, it is. Um, and I think that it's valuable to do that. But again, you're now, are you going to isolate me as a reader because I don't have one of those devices? I'm not going to buy your book. So I'm just saying, why, why would you do that? Uh, make it compatible across all readers. Maybe you want to put a thing at the warning that says, warning, do not buy this book unless you have a Kindle Fire or an iPad, which is fine. Uh, but just keep in mind that you're, you're eliminating some of them. I'm, I'm not saying, I'm just, is it in the, um, can I help you with it? Probably. Is it in the realm of this workshop? No. I mean, I know this stuff's all very cool, but it's just complicated. <laughs> and it's, it's time consuming, yes. I have a word question. Um, I do a lot of highlighting, changing font colors, cutting and pasting, editing. When I do that, am I creating tracks and garbage and hidden word? That you are, you're probably fine with highlighting and colors, but just keep in mind that like a red color is going to be really faint text on an e-reader like this. Um, I don't actually leave it. I put it back to black eventually. You should be fine. Yeah. Uh, no. You should be fine. You're going to go back. At the end of the day, a really cool feature is if you have all this messy formatting, there's some shortcuts that can clear off formatting really quickly. I prefer JPEG because they're smaller. PNG are higher quality tend to be, but they're also larger images. So let's go through an example. How would you do pictures? So all you do is you, in File Explorer, you, the same thing works if you're on Finder on the Mac. Um, you just need to basically take the picture. Yeah. 
and drag and drop it right in here. One thing about pictures is they need to be in line, which means they can be above and below text, but you can't have wrapped text around the, around the picture. Um, the other thing is if you want there to be a caption for the picture, you need to trap, you need to clip the caption with the picture. Otherwise, there's no guarantee that this image is going to show up on the same page as your text because it's going to scale this image to the size of an e-reader. If I have an iPhone, like I'm reading a Kindle book on an iPhone, that's a much smaller screen than this. So what you want to do is type whatever your caption is and then use a tool like Jing, which is free, um, to, to crop that picture and that caption. And then it's a really quick process, I'll show you. All you do is you grab this. Go Google Jing project, J-I-N-G. Grab it soon because they're discontinuing it. It's by the people who make Camtasia and Snagit. I don't think this thing panned out as well as they had planned for converting free to paid people. So they're taking it off the market. Part of it? All right, so see what you get is this cool little crosshairs. And if you wanted all this to be part of the caption, well, okay, you need to be careful that you don't have a blinking caption like I just showed you here. But you would just select it and then simply capture the image and copy it. You don't even have to save it to your computer. Just do a, uh, you can either save it, but it's quicker if you just do copy. And then you would replace this image here. with the image you just captured, which has now got the captions I wanted on there. You can, you can do this, but it, uh, again, I just recommend. Now, here's an example of what I would recommend you don't do. Notice I'm, I'm still on normal style, not good. So what I was showing you guys while I was waiting for the computer is, instead of normal style, I want to create a style that's custom here. So let's say it has the same features as um, normal. All I'm going to do is come over here to styles, Click on um, Manage Styles, I think. Let's see, where is it? It's a little different here. New Style. And what it's going to do, it's going to base the style that you're creating right now on every element that you just created for that one line. And I'm going to call this E Brian, whatever you want. And then stay, save that style. So now, instead of normal, I'm using eBrian. And again, it avoids the use of it. And it'll keep eBrian every time I hit return until I turn on some different style. So this is how you would go about creating. And you would do this as you build your book. But try to minimize the number of styles. Because the cool thing is, say I used eBrian throughout the whole book, but I decided I wanted a bigger space between every single paragraph. You simply make the change in the style. And it makes the change throughout the whole book. It's, it's, a uni it's a beautiful thing. But what I was trying to show you guys, if, if you only want to change one thing, under um, page layout, so this is called the ribbon bar. You guys all understand this. Each time you click on this, it changes. And this was in Word 2007 and newer. But right here is under spacing. You can change this to whatever you want on a paragraph by paragraph basis. And it'll, it'll pull things in tighter. So again, if you need to customize one particular paragraph, but you don't want to create a whole new style, you just do this here in the page layout feature. Again, these aren't, there's only a couple things you need to learn. And I would get in and start working with Word. Um, and you'll start to use this. I'm just trying to show you guys the way you need to look at it a little bit differently than maybe you have in the past. Yes? All right, heading one and two. So let's go back to Word. Oh, I'm going to run this in coherence. So here's a trick. Um, uh, here, enter coherence. So what coherence does is it actually runs the application as if it was on the Mac, which versus running it in a virtual window. It typically runs a lot faster and a lot cleaner if you guys ever use coherence. See, so now I'm back to Mac. Hopefully that'll go away in a minute. Um, say this was my subchapter one, 
then you would apply heading two. And those pull into the table of contents. Now if you, if you don't have my template, you can just create your table of contents, but um, now notice it put some spaces here. Gosh, come on. Okay. Um, why is it putting these spaces right here? Okay, if I turn on the show hide, I can start to see why. It's putting, I'm using heading one style, which is creating blank lines. So whatever I type in here, it's creating it if, so that means I have to delete some blank lines and got rid of those. Otherwise, those are gonna show up in the table of contents and drive you crazy. But let's go back to create a table of contents. Uh, it's under references. Insert table of contents. And now it's got the table of contents here. So whatever I change here, one, you have to click on update table. This one's done a little bit differently than my template. My template, you just right click and do update field, but it's going to update the table with everything in there. So you've got to make some modifications to this if you want to remove the page numbers and a few other things. Um, but I know that's a very important part of this, right? So that's how that works. Let's go back to this. Oh, let me show you something really cool or really important. Say you've got a bunch, in Tom's case, you've got all these blogs that you want to convert to a book. I'm gonna copy this first paste, or this, say this was information, which I do got, I wanna send you guys, right? Um, so I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna come down to a new page. Don't hit paste, right? That's what you would say, why don't I just hit paste? If you do, ooh, horrible, proud over all this ugly formatting, that's not what I wanted to do. Instead, what you do is make sure you first select the style that you wanna use. In this case, I'm gonna use eBrian. And now I'm going to go to my home menu Paste special and paste unformatted. And now what that does is it basically applies the style that of what I just selected to everything I just pasted. This is the really important thing if you're scraping content from any other source, whether it be from PDF, um, potentially another Word file. The danger that comes with copy and pasting from Word to Word is that it brings all the styles over with it unless you paste special. Now here's the drawbacks of Paste Special. It also removes all the bold and ital all the character styles as well. So you have potentially got to go back in there and add those back in. Um, hyperlinks, for example, Tom, if you've got links to other things, you've got to put those back in. It's going to strip all that out. But Paste or Unformatted is your friend. That's, that's the way you build these books. Again, you're, you're talking about getting content into a clean, un-messy format. I call formatting issues gremlins. You want to avoid the gremlins because when you upload the file, you're going to have all these issues. So, so could you not have just simply highlighted it and then gone back and changed the style? No, not as, no. It, it, we, once you got the style in there, you've already allowed something ugly to get in there. It's much messier a way to do it that way. You, you could potentially, but the problem is now you've got that style in there and Kindle potentially is going to hiccup when it sees that. So, Let's go to the back end. So obviously I can go into this uh, into a lot more depth. Let's just go in. I want to show you guys how you upload it. So let's say for sake of getting through this. Oh, here's a demo book. No, I don't want to do that because that's with, based on the old template. Um, let me open up the file here real quick. All right, so here's the latest version of the template. So no matter what it's in, remember before you upload it to Amazon, it's got to be in a DOC format. That's the only one Amazon recognizes. So I'm going to save this as a Word 97 2003 doc. So I'm just going to go to show 
June 16th, right? So you guys see what I'm saving. I'm saving it in my operations folder. And then say you're all done, you've built your book, and you're ready to see it on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. Now you come over to Amazon, and the website is um, KDP, which stands for Kindle Direct Publishing, .amazon.com. And it's their back end where you can sign up for an account with your regular Amazon account, but it's separate than like an Advantage account. It's, you gotta have your own KDP account. Gives you all the information about it. Um, so you, you log into your account. Uh, while I'm here, just to show you guys um, that you can really, this is worthwhile versus investing, I'm gonna click on my sales report. I'm gonna look at the prior six week royalties. So you can see how people like me are earning. So these are all my sales. And this is what they pay out on each book. So you've got things like a delivery cost, depending, something about the size of your file. The larger your file, the higher your delivery cost. So if you have a 50 meg file, Amazon's charging you a lot because Amazon pays for that 3G connection when somebody buys a book on Kindle. So this is a justified cost for somebody who's buying your book. And they pay 70%, but as we go down here and see the total payouts, that's how much Amazon's paid us in the last six weeks for our Kindle books sold. So you really can make money on this. I'm not just blowing anything here. But let's go back to uh, the bookshelf because I'm gonna upload a, um, a sample title. And I need to go to one of my titles that's a draft. And again, you can set up a test title just to play around with uploading your file to see how it looks. Um, notice these, some of these are draft. It means we haven't published them. Um, so here's one. I'll just go into this one here. If you've, been, if you've ever gone into Amazon, you'll see all this information here. Um, but ultimately, come down here and you're gonna upload your file. So you click on Browse for Book. And now we're gonna find that file I just saved. All right, so here's the file right here, it's a dot .doc. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload that book, it's very small, and then Amazon's gonna do its back-end conversion. Now what's cool, they just enabled this year, is that you can actually now download this file from this website in a Mobi format. So you don't have to buy your own book. So say you have a Kindle, there's two ways to get it on your own Kindle. One, you can email it to this device. When you email it to this device, Amazon does a conversion before it gets to it. Each Kindle has its own email address. You have to set yourself up as a proof sender, but it's very cool because I can email any Word doc to myself and it's on my Kindle so I can read it at my leisure. And there's also tools out there to send web pages to your Kindle. I have one right here. So if I just click on this, it'll actually send this web page to my Kindle and it does the conversion. All right, so it says upload and conversion successful. So what I'm gonna do is click on preview book. And you can see now this is what it's gonna look like on a Kindle. So you can go ahead to the next page. And some things to make notes of are the indents here. There's your table of contents. Now, you can't click on these because this is just a previewer. This trips a lot of people up. <laughs> Trust me, if it's underlined, it's a hyperlink. And you'll be able to read it on a Kindle. But this is just a preview. I wish Amazon would clarify that. And, okay, so here's an example. E no indent is supposed to not have an indent, but it does. what the file looks like, so I'm gonna show you how to go in and do this. And this is where you do sort of that trial and error. So, I'm gonna go back to the Word file and look at something for a second. Let's open up that firework file we were working on. All right, so remember I told you the first, so like all of this is not supposed to be indented. Let's look at this style. Eno indent is selected. But I know why this isn't working. So I fixed this in the new template. This must be the old template. Let me find out. Yeah. 
fix it right now. It doesn't. So then this is supposed to be indented. All right, I'm gonna fix it right now. So I'm gonna go back to that book. I thought I fixed it in this file, but apparently I didn't. Uh, or Dropbox bit me. If you guys use a lot of Dropbox, have you ever noticed occasionally a version of a file isn't the version of the file you saved? Like it sometimes keeps the wrong version of a file. I think that happened on this version, or this example, because Dropbox didn't sync up yet. Um, so Eno indent. So I'm gonna go ahead and modify the style throughout. And you can't see what it did, but it actually did something very tiny to change that. So I just changed all those. I'm gonna save, close it. And that's the way it should be in the template. I'm gonna to have to check a CD before anybody buys one today to make sure it's right. Um, let's go back to Amazon. This is kind of the trial and error stuff I was telling you about. Oh, and it's pulling in page numbers. All right, they are changing stuff on me again. It didn't used to pull in foot footers. Um, but I will get rid of those here in a second. So let's upload the new file. It would, but I wanted the file to be the same file that you can use for print. And Amazon didn't use to pick up the footers, but as you can see now, they are. Um, Got to have a little tighter dialogue with those guys that when they make changes like this, because you know they they change. And actually, I have a I have. A suspicion that they made changes after my last dialogue with them because I was going back and forth showing them video because for over almost two years we were doing it the same way every time and getting predictable results and then all of a sudden this month we upload the file and we got different results I said what happened and I had to show them a uh, example for them to see what was going on because they had changed something all right good so the indents you notice are gone see sorry this is, I don't know if you guys noticed it, but this is very important because it was indenting every single paragraph. I didn't want it to. So now it's not, except in the case where I want it to indent. So E no indent. See, this is, this is the difference between styles. Do you guys understand what you're seeing? This style has an indent. This one doesn't. It's very important as you're writing a book so that there's indents where they're supposed to be. Sorry, yes. No, it's set at the time that you upload it because they do that full-blown conversion. Now, what's cool is what you can do here is you can download the preview file here and it'll save the Mobi file to your computer and you can open it up on a Kindle emulator that um, Amazon makes available for free. Uh, so you can actually emulate a Kindle Fire. Um, see right here, it saved this file. You can open this file on your Kindle reader or you can run the emulator. I'm going to go ahead and now I'm running in coherence. Let me see. Yeah, you need to get it. It has to be delivered through Amazon or Barnes and Noble. And that's the only place. No, well, you, if you have an iPad, you know you can open a PDF on the iPad, <laughs> like a PDF version. So, I mean, could we write the book in a PDF and sell it to Amazon, and then Amazon, the customer could buy it? Nope, Amazon can't protect the PR, PDF. They can only protect Mobi files. Well, They could sell them. Yeah, I don't know how many are going to. They're going to prefer to get the book as an iBook. So they're going to prefer that it be in a format that the e-readers. See, the thing, difference between a PDF and an EPUB file, you guys, or an e-book file is that a PDF doesn't scale the text to the screen. So the, the cool thing about this book here, let me show you two cool things that people don't know about, not everybody knows about Kindles. One is if I want to read this in large print, I can change the font size and it dynamically changes all of that. The other thing is in order for these devices to be able to read every single word, it can't be PDF. 
it needs to be a text that it can understand. So you can turn on, oh, okay, this one doesn't have it. So it doesn't do text to speeches on all web pages. So you've got to have um, an ebook. And the cool thing is if you're driving and you can't read, because that's not safe, you can turn on text to speech. Reads the whole book to you. It's a computer voice, but you can have a female or a male. But if you're really into a book, you're willing to tolerate this. And I will tell you from experience, well, and you know it's going to get better. That's the thing. What's freaky in five years from now, Tom, this is going to read to me, or less than that, in a voice that is just like better the English than, you know, my children or something. Um, yeah. <laughs> The, um, all right, let me look at the CD guys really quick. <sighs> okay, so this is what the CD looks like, and I'm just hoping that the changes were made on this template um, right here. So when you get the template, you double click on this DOT file and what it's going to do is open a new file based on this template. I need to check something because if these weren't done right, this template file is going to have to be replaced. I can still sell you the CDs, but I got to immediately send you the new file to use. Oh. So, okay, this is a warning to Mac users. Did you notice I just clicked on that DOT file? Look where it's trying to open it. An iBooks author. That's not right. So what you want to do is make sure you open it with, again, this is only on the Mac, but I'm glad, so I'm glad I'm seeing that this is happening. Um, okay, so when you open it with Microsoft Word, it's going to pop open a new file based on it, right? You're going to turn on your styles menu, which I walk you through how to do. Now what I want to see here is when I go to this style here, Yeah, I just made this change and it's not on these CDs. So um, I had to change, just so you guys, full disclosure, I had to change this no indent style for it to be no indent because the Amazon explained to you guys change something. So the new version of the template, which I thought was on all these CDs, I just brought down. Um, and I know what happened. So because I was having sync issues with my computer at work, I turned off sync. I paused it on Dropbox. So it wasn't syncing up. I don't know. That's really weird because I just made all those changes. Anyway, I don't know if it makes sense to you guys, but essentially it is fixed in the new version of the template. It's a slight modification you have to make, but it is a new template file. And again, this is a, another reason I think just this stuff is constantly changing. Let me show you, I guess. I would let you know. I'd send you an email. But you have to register for the site anyway, so I'll have your contact information. But yes, it's to be honest with you, this, is, since I've been, this has been over a year. This is the first time they did something significant. Let me just show you the Barnes & Noble um, back end. To be honest with you, this one is a lot cleaner. Because see, what happened is when Kindle Fire came out, Amazon this is when the problem started. Amazon has a slightly different format for the Kindle Fire than they do for the Kindle. So when you upload your book, it actually converts one file for Kindle Fire and one file for Kindle. And that's, it, like for, for example, the Kindle Fire, it works perfectly. There's no issues. It's the traditional Kindle where there's an issue. Um, but here's the back end of Barnes & Noble. So the same thing here is I'm going to upload the same file and I just want you guys to see how clean it looks since that um, demo with um, Um, with Kindle didn't quite go the way I planned. Um, but same thing here, you're going to go ahead and grab the file. So I'm going to browse, I'm going to grab the exact same file right here. And we're going to upload that book, in this case replace and preview. So if you had multiple versions that you were testing, you would replace and preview the book just like this. And what Barnes & Noble does is it converts this doc file to an EPUB file. 
Now an EPUB file you can read on any device including an iPad um, or an EPUB reader for the PC. Um, so it's going to create this preview and it's going to give you a little example of here's what the file looks like on a Nook emulator. Same thing is none of the links here are live so don't worry about the fact that you can't click on them. Here's your link table of contents. By the way, you delete this paragraph, um, which explains. Okay, but here's how the styles are correctly being formatted. Barnes & Noble didn't change anything. This is how clean it used to look on the Kindle until they changed something. But you can see here, you've got all the styles applied, and it looks just the way it should. You know, here's how pictures come through, and um, I have a demo book that I can upload here that shows all the different uses of styles. You can have tables, um, you can have whatever, you know, different font sizes, but it comes back to that doc file and having somebody just show you some of the things that you need to know if you're going to do this. And you can figure out a lot of this stuff on your own, but it's just going to take you more time. Um, here in Barnes & Noble, this is really cool. It's very subtle, but over here on the left-hand side after you upload your book, it says, would you like to download the EPUB file? So guess what? I just took a doc file, uploaded it to Barnes & Noble, and now I'm magically downloading an EPUB file version of it. It's right here. And if you have Adobe Digital Editions, it'll allow you to open up an EPUB file on your computer. You can also transfer that EPUB file to Barnes & Noble, and you can transfer it to your iPad using iTunes. So the way I proof the work that I do is I have an iPad and a Kindle, and I open it up on the iPad in iBooks, because that's oftentimes how people really look at it at first, and then I also load it onto my Kindle and make sure it looks the way that um, it was supposed to. Yes? When you're done with the formatting discussion, could you go back and tell us more about the keyword suggestion? Yeah. Yeah, and I apologize. This one went off a little bit more into a tangent than I had planned. All right, but here's that same EPUB file, and now I'm reading it on EPUB Reader. Again, and the indents are right. It was just that one tweak that Amazon made to that Kindle software and these bullets. I need to fix these bullets, you guys. Sorry. There's something with that template. So I'm constantly, I guess the truth is, I am making tweaks to the template based on the results. When you guys give me feedback and say, Brian, something doesn't look right, then that might substantiate a change. So let's go back to what I was talking about in the list of experts we have in the room. Um, if I were in your shoes, let's get out of here. So it's, this is going to be a little bit of a test. If I open Word on the Mac while uh, Confluence is still running, they're different versions. But I wanted to go back to that list because I want to use a few of you guys as examples. Okay. You never notice computers don't quite work at the speed that you can think sometimes. You're sitting here waiting, waiting. I think what would make sense next time is if I get everything running I need to and close everything else so you guys don't have to sit here while things load. But I'm still working through getting used to working on a Mac. I just can't stomach buying another laptop just for my workshops. I already invested in a very expensive laptop. The reason I bought this, one of the reasons you guys, is you can't upload to Apple iBooks without a Mac. You have to download software that Run, only runs on a Mac. So if you do need me to upload your book to iBooks, uh, that's fine. But I mean, whether I do it or someone else, you have to have a Mac. All right, so let's take a look at a good example. What I would do, you contacted me and said, you know, hey, should I do a book? Or we, we want to do your example. Which one is yours, Kara? Okay. So this is your topic. Let's go into um, first place I would look is on Amazon. And I want you guys, you're going to start tuning into something called sales rankings on each listing. So we're just going to go to, change it to Kindle Books, because this is, remember, the market you're going after. Don't just do a global search. And we're going to do a search on nonprofit management. We can try both with a dash and without a dash on nonprofit. But as you can see, there's 289 results. Now what I want to do here, which is not very, there's not much competition there, that's not bad. But instead of relevance, I'm going to sort by popularity because I want to see what the best-selling book on your topic is selling, what the rank is. So 
It looks like right now this is the number one book. Right here, so this is the number you want to look at, Amazon bestsellers rank. And this is going to change every time you do this search. Because at any given time, your, your book is ranked amongst all the other books out there, right? My advice to you is any book that is had a, has a sales rank of less than 100,000 and has a category you think you can rank into, you should go for it. Because that means it's in the top 10%. Right? There's a million books on Amazon. So if it's in the top 100,000, it means it's one of the top 10% sellers. If it's under that, and again, you search other books. Now let's look at the very next book on the list, just out of curiosity. Yeah, it's, that one's in the top 10% uh, as well. So that would be one I'd be worth actually looking into. Now let's search for nonprofit management without the dash because that one word is a good example. Um, yeah, I think that Amazon figured it out. Nope. So here's a totally different book. Um, wow, $25 Kindle book is not common because they're only getting paid 35% on that. But look, they don't want it. This is why publishers, I would stay away from big publishers. Back to your question about should I use a traditional publisher or a self-publisher, I just realized that this is one of the huge disadvantages of using a big publisher. They don't discount your ebook typically. And if I was the author and it took $25 for you just to get access to my content, I'd be pretty ticked because that's a huge barrier to entry to anyone. Now maybe it's not such a bad barrier to entry. Maybe he's weeding out anybody that can't afford the $25 for the book. But let's look at his sales ranking. Wow. So it's still very high. 20, top, that's the top 25,000. Now, um, what is that? So $299 to $999, they pay 70%. Anything over $999, they only pay 35%. So yeah, these guys are willing to only take 35%. Now, I'll bet you, again, they're not trying not to cannibalize their print sales because that's typically where publishers make money. Um, I have a client who has a $40 book, which he prices his ebook at $20. So they're doing that intentionally because he d they have a thousand books they're trying to get rid of. They don't want to make it so affordable. But I will tell you that um, as ebooks get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, and here's the fear of the big publishers, is that eventually it's going to be a no-brainer to buy the book as an ebook than it's compared to buying it in print. Like the c argument cost savings is going to be so significant to get the ebook that you're going to pay for this self. And this is what Amazon's argument is on the Kindle. You're going to pay for the Kindle after 10 books, you, after you buy 10 books, because of how much money you save on each book is going to pay for this $80 or $150, whatever one you buy, that quickly, right? It's a no-brainer. If you like to read books, this thing pays for itself after 10 books. And trust me, you will enjoy reading books on this more than you do in print once you get used to it, depending on your, your type of book. Now, I will say that for nonfiction books that you want to put a bunch of notes in, I still buy the print version. You can't exactly take notes on this thing. You can highlight things, but it's kind of clunky. You'd and it's be surprised if they start giving those away once Yeah, you're right, because it's going to pay for itself. So, yeah, they're going to make money on the book. It's the same thing like the X station, or X, Xbox, right, and the PlayStation. You know they don't make any money. In fact, I think Amazon at $80 isn't making any money on these. Yeah. Does anybody have a subscription yet? It's a great idea. I didn't get a chance to talk about because it it's advanced topics, but you can set up um, a subscription that somebody could buy. If you walked them through how to set it up on their Kindle, that every time you issued a new newsletter, it would be delivered directly to their Kindle. And you, so you could totally do that. Um, let's go to Google Insights now. So nonprofit management, all right, I'm starting to get an indication that that would be a marketplace worth writing a book about. So now we're going to go to Google Insights which is a tool you guys should get familiar with. And I think you have to be logged into a Gmail account to get to it. They don't want you using it otherwise. Um, which is kind of strange because they're actually tracking what you're searching for. I mean, think about it. Anything you put in here, Amazon technically, if you're logged into your account, they know that you're looking for information on how to build a bomb. You know? Use the wrong things and you might be getting a call. So let's go non-profit management. All right, so as we look at this, 
You can see the popularity of it's not where it used to be, but that's okay. This is just interest level. But what I want you to hone in on is these are the terms that people are actually typing to search for it. Nonprofit management center. Really? Why would that be a thing? Nonprofit center. Center for nonprofit. So these are the things you want to sort of think about in your title and your keywords because this is how people are searching. If the people are searching on Google for this, this way, don't you think they're probably searching for it that way on Amazon? Um, now, what I don't, this is a weird one because a nonprofit, you sort of have to straddle between nonprofit and nonprofit with a dash because it's commonly used in both ways. And let's see if this one's in, now, this one has less interest. Um, I thought that was the more popular way to search for it, but apparently not. So in this case, it's nonprofit organizations, nonprofit jobs. So you may want to consider putting this stuff in your book, even though it's not specifically to your book, right? Because these are what people are searching for. Now let me show you that cool tool I told you called NetSpeak. Google Insights. Now this is a tool that very few people know about called NetSpeak. So let's say you write a book on nonprofit, but you have no idea how people are using the word. So here's what you do is you go nonprofit question mark. And you can see in the English language that there's one million instances. This is the most common use of nonprofit has the word organizations associated with it. Then there's nonprofit organization, nonprofit corporation, nonprofit sector. Like these are the things you guys want to think about um, to promote your, um, you know, to work into your book. This is how people are searching for it. Because this is the most common uses in the English language. Say you were doing something on um, Facebook, question mark. Facebook me. Okay, if you've been working on Facebook, do you ever say, well, you should Facebook me? But a lot of people, it's used in the English language quite a bit. That might be the title of your Facebook book. Facebook me, and you know what? It might do a lot better than the book of everything you need to know about Facebook because it's how people are searching. First and foremost, if it's in your title or subtitle, Amazon's going to put you at the very top. So, so, so what you're trying to do is, I mean, so we're talking about two different things here. We're talking, when we're looking at the in Google Insight or NetSpeak, we're looking at the most popular ways that they're utilizing words that we want to show up in our book or, or in words in our book or our expertise. But then when you were back on Amazon and you were saying, well, you don't want to be too broad or, so what's the, di that's what I don't understand. All right. Because when you're showing me the most popular word phrases, why wouldn't that translate to too broad? So word phrases, the net speak is the place that you would go if you have no idea what keywords people are using. So start there. Okay. okay you're assuming when you start typing into Google Insights, you're assuming you think like everyone else. So for example, that Facebook me is a good example. Now before I go back to Amazon, I'm going to go back. So after NetSpeak, I'm going to go to Google Analytics. So let's see if we can just go back here. Sorry, Google Insights. Um, and what I'm going to type in here is Facebook me. So I'm getting a little more information is, are people searching for this? Wow. Where are people searching for it? Albania. <laughs> <laughs> Love me, me gusta. I'm starting to see a very potentially powerful book title here. Um, let's go back to Amazon. So I'm going to change to Kindle store, and we're going to do Facebook me. All right, there's 1,200 results. But is a single title of any of these books Facebook Me? So if you had the title Facebook Me, you would dominate these searches. Nobody's doing this. Obviously, right? This is, this is a book that, that should be written. This should be the title of the most successful book on this topic. Um, let's see. Uh, OK. This one has 37 reviews. That's, all right, here's an example of a bad cover. Yep, and look at their sales rank. 
I guarantee you, if they had a better cover, let me show you a good cover that we did, which has proved to me that a good cover matters. This is one of our books right here, one of my author's books. Now, if you look at that, it's a very professional cover. People are like, okay, this is not a self-published book. This looks like a real professional. Now, she's got, um, let's see, let's look at her ranking, 18,000. So if I look, this book sells three to four books a day. Just to see how that, to tell you how that translates into actual sales volume. Always the things we've got to recover and it's not. <laughs> Which, let's pull up the cover and get everybody's opinion. Okay. Entrepreneur is a pretty crowded subject line, Very hard and it's hard to spell. That is a good cover. However, um, no, I don't. I wouldn't change anything on there. Ten reviews. Um, she has 27 reviews. But here's the most important thing. Let's go. I was actually going to show you guys this. Um, I'm going to search for entrepreneur. Yeah, let me do this first. All right, I searched for entrepreneurs. There's 2,300 results. Look at mine's number two. And the toilet paper entrepreneurship is Yeah, he's, well, he's got 377 reviews. I only have seven. Um, but see, it's sorting by relevance, and that's the default search from Amazon. Um, this is a new one. Brad Feld, he's right on page one, too. Um, but let's search for uh, LinkedIn. Yeah, it must be. There's only 236 books on LinkedIn. Now look at who's number two. I mean, you guys, if you're not on page one of the search terms, good luck getting past all of these titles. So just like Google, you got to get on page one. And how do you do that? So if we search for, the problem is actually your title is the f rise and fall of the entrepreneur. Yeah, decline and fall. So you need to think about the search words that people are actually using. So, um, you know, entrepreneur, I mean, People don't want to read books about failure either. Um, so anyway, I, I don't know. It's speculation. But try some of these things. You know, a new title and a new cover, it would be interesting to see the dramatic results that that might do for you. Uh, we just Now, it takes time, so I don't want you guys to be impatient. It takes Amazon two to four weeks, maybe longer, to index your entire book. So it's not going to just start showing up for your search term right away. Their computers have to read your book. Something like three to 5,000 new Kindle books are being uploaded to Amazon every day. So you gotta imagine their computers are overwhelmed. How do you, how do you know there's a million books now? All right, so what, so go to the Kindle store right here on the drop down and leave that blank and just click go. And over here, there's already 1.4 million. It's growing much quicker than it used to. I, I gotta stop teaching these classes. Yeah, so this number right here is what we'll show you. You'll notice this number tomorrow. I would venture to guess it'll be another 5,000 on top of that. Yes? Just, for those of you who might be discouraged by the number of titles that are already out there, walk into any print bookstore. The print publishers still think there are readers out there who are publishing more, so certainly e-books are a good way to go. So the same thing on books, if we just leave that blank and do a search, See, here's the 20 million I told you. There's actually less. Well, I guess I must have rounded up. But as you guys look at categories, too, you can see where there's uh, crowded spaces. Um, let's go back to the Kindle. I want to show you guys something that's really cool. And it's hard for me to find this search any other way than going through um, my own search link here. Okay. So I mentioned in here, um, well, this is Don's book. Let me see. Okay, now, hang on. Where's the link? It's, it's hard to find it any other way. I guess this is it. KDP Select, I didn't get a chance to talk about that. The last five minutes, I want to touch on this. Um, KDP Select is, an is a program that Amazon offers if you sell your book exclusively on Kindle. 
for a three month period. It doesn't mean that you're going to always give them exclusive rights, but for three months, if you sign up for KDP Select, they let you sell your book for free for five days every 90 days, which means you can offer it up, which means you can seed the market. It's just like giving away free books. One of the ways you get reviews is you give away books. And in return for the giveaway of the book, you ask for a review. It's called KDP Select. And what you can do through that link I showed you is you can sort best selling books free and paid on Amazon on every single category. You can look at any category and it'll list the top 100 paid and the top 100 free. I mean, you can download free books forever now on Amazon. Um, these are all the free books. You're not typically going to see major publishers put books for free, but you're going to see um, self published authors do this. And it's a way to seed the market and get some reviews. So my author, who, uh, my, my um, client who uses this very successfully, which I talk about here, is Nancy. Um, so we're going to look at her book for a second. So she did um, this book. She, Nancy Geis, she used to live in Fort Collins, called The Eighth Sea. Now, we converted her book in December. And between January, in the months of January and February, she, told, so she sold a total of 40 books on Kindle. Through her efforts, lots of working hard, right? She got about a dozen reviews. March 1st, she put her book on the KDP Select program and made it available free for five days. She promoted it on Facebook. Now, granted, she already had all those positive reviews, but in five days, she had over 75,000 downloads of her book. Because it was free. But it's an historical fiction book, and she was shocked. I mean, she was sending emails every day. I'm now up to this. I'm now up to this. She was just blown away. All these people were downloading her book because it was free. After five days, it went back on sale. The first week, she sold 400 books because she had a sales ranking that was so high that she had all this visibility. So even though it went back on sale, she sort of was riding this popularity wave. And today, is this, is, this the one, is this the one where she went back and had her professor help her, or her English teacher help her with the, she had written this book when she was in high school. Yeah. She came back years later mm -hmm. and then. She took two years off to finish it up. She had some major newspaper articles written about her. Uh, I don't know if that was her. I don't, it might have been. I don't remember her getting major press. She got mentioned in some, um, uh, yeah, let me see. So this is the paperback version. Just to compare the differences, how she's doing on print versus, so print, she's pretty high up there, 300,000. She also, by the way, got a bump in her print sales. And it, the fact that the book was available for Kindle for free, people liked it. So she, then they bought the book in print because some people don't want to read the book. Um, but her page count is 372 pages, so it's pretty long. Um, but let's look at her Kindle version. As, as you get as much fit, yeah, free as for those five days that it's for free, you'll get as many downloads as people are willing to download it. So yep. After you upload your book, it says, do you want to enroll in KDB Select? You say yes. And then it says there's a promotions manager. Um, I'll plan to give a tutorial on it on that Pixels to Profit site. That'll be one of the first things I do. Because I will say that that's one of the ways that self-published authors are getting the most traction. Um, and if most of your sales are on Amazon, you might as well take advantage of it. We've got our first book. Actually, just out of curiosity, our first book is there right now. Um, it's called... Um, the Inside Edge. This wasn't a great title because it's a very common usage of the word. So right now it's free. For five days you guys can go download this book for free. It just started today. Well, look at that. She's already in the top 10 under self-help. Motivational. So it'll be very interesting to see. Let's, let's see how many downloads we got. I haven't looked at this myself yet. So when you go into your uh, back end, and you, it may not have, it probably doesn't have today's reports. Let's see, it's a, usually a month delay, or a day delay. Yeah, um, the inside edge, yeah. So it'll be interesting just so you guys can see, because uh, this will be a good follow-up. So as of yesterday, we had sold one copy month to date. 
it'll be very interesting to see how you go from one to what we go to with this five-day promotion. Now, we've issued a press release, and she's using social media to promote this. Um, but this will kind of be a test. Now, I will say that, again, she's got 16 five-star reviews, so that's helping to get it where it's at. It's a, it's a top 10 seller right now in her category. Uh, let's see what she's stacked up against. And typically, when you get to this point, you guys want to take a screenshot and put it up on your website. And that helps fuel the fire. You tell people, my book is a top 10 seller right now on, um, here it is, on motivational books on the same screen as Stephen Covey. Now, what's cool about that book, too, is that, you know, it, it's the, um, it should further give the author a boost to her consulting business because there's the first thing you see in her book is a link to her website. And I'll bet you anything that she's getting a lot more clicks, clicks right now through her website. So remember what I told you to put in the front. You got the synopsis. Here's her website right here, and it's a live link. I mean, so she's getting tons of uh, visibility just because now her book is at the top of Kindle. So um, that's probably the most exciting thing right now going on in the community that, of self-publishing that you can see firsthand. I wish I had started it yesterday so I could give you guys, show you some numbers. But I bet you, being a top 10 seller, I wouldn't be surprised if it had at least 5,000 downloads by the end of today. You know, so she's an Amazon star right now. So I'll have to check in with her and let her know. All right, two more questions, or yeah, one or two more minutes, one, one or two more questions. I'm, I'm afraid we're out of town. And then uh, I'll finish up here with putting your contact information in. Um, and then if you guys want to buy the template, uh, you can come up and do that. It's normally $97, and I'll flip it and give you $79 today. Because I still, here's the bottom line, you guys. If you call me and need help with it, and I don't charge enough for me to even take your call, then guess what? I'd be happy to help you, but I need to charge you. You know, Microsoft does their support packs now. It's kind of the same idea, is that you're prepaying for like an hour of support. I've spent up to an hour with some people um, to get it working for them because I, this is, you know, this is important to me. Sorry, so question. So what I'm passing around, if you want to just put in your name and email address, and if you're on a PC or a Mac, it actually helps me because when you con if you contact me, I, I, know, I know. Yes? Uh, have you ever had or heard about problems where you make one of these free offers and um, you get a lot of attention and there's those direct links to the website and you have problems with servers crashing and how do you get around that or do you have to call people to host you? You know, my personal experience, just so you guys know, recent experience is I, um, I have both Bluehost and HostGator, which are fairly popular hosting services. HostGator is much better, faster. I don't have issues. Bluehost, at least on the server I'm on, and I realize that we're all on shared servers, it's been horrible. Snails, pace, but HostGator, if you guys are just looking at hosting with someone, I would recommend HostGator over Bluehost. But that's, you know, that's something I can't comment on. It's, to be honest with you, it's every person's website's going to have different impacts. I wouldn't worry about that. That's a good problem to have. If you get featured on People Magazine or something, or CNN, that might have that issue. But again, people are going to Amazon. Amazon has the fastest website in the world. You know that? You will never find a web page load faster than Amazon's website. Yes? You know, they don't tell us um, who's buying it for the iPad and who's buying it for the Kindle. I would venture to guess that there's probably as many, if not more, people buying it for the iPad as the Kindle, just because to me, I see them everywhere. Um, but when you travel, I notice a lot more of these. So if you're ever on a plane, you notice these come up a lot more now on the plane than, at least for me, for people who are actually reading the book. My concern about um, the iPad is there's so much more to do on it than read a book. I mean, the good thing about these devices is it's used for one thing, that's to buy and read books. Um, I'm kind of surprised, I'm not surprised, but Amazon's strategy to put a lot of effort into the Kindle Fire because it does everything else. I don't know how many more books they're selling on the Kindle Fire, but I know what they're doing is they're trying to give people an alternative to 
the Nook tablet and the iPad tablet because they realize when somebody buys an iPad and the day that Amazon, or Apple decides to stop supporting Kindle, which could come, right? It's their device that Amazon's not then locked out of selling to that marketplace. Well, that's true because you're still not really losing your Apple's sales because people can buy the Kindle book on their iPad. So right. Yep. Tom? All right. Let's keep wrapping around the closet. Thank you.